Okay, it's okay then. All right, so uh, gout is uh, characterized um, by swollen and painful inflamed joint, yeah? And um, if you look at gout in a sense, yeah, it's actually about uh, deposits of uric acid crystals, yeah? Right at, let me just find the, right at, Usually, the deposit will be at the joints, and uh, somehow they have the body has preferences towards where they're going to deposit the uric acid, yeah, the excessive, the excess uric acid, and usually is actually deposit near the big toe. Okay, um, you see, this is very if you if you when when you work as a pharmacist later on, and somebody come in and say they have gout. Uh, take a look at the joints, especially the, the hands and also the, the big toe. Yeah? This is where you will have an elevated uh, amount of uric acid uh, in here. And you, what happens usually as well, um, the, um, especially for the chronic yeah, uric acid, yeah? uh, chronic sufferers of uh, gout, uh, they would have this permanent joint deformity. The joint will look very weird, actually. Uh, very strange, yeah. Uh, it's 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 really big in on this side. It will jutting out like this, yeah. Um, so from a chemistry point of, uh, of of view, if you look at your acid, in in this case, yeah, you see whether I can use a highlighter. Um, okay, uh, uric acid. When you say uric acid uh, crystals in gout. Is from a chemistry point of view, um, it's actually about um, super, super saturated solution. When you have too much of, say, an element or a compound in water, for example, or in a solvent, they, they will, and you put too much, then at the end of the day, they would actually uh, super saturate the solution. You actually form a super saturated solution. So this is what happened in uh, gout. Yeah? Uh, and what's Who's the culprit? The culprit is urate, yeah. And if you see, urate is made of this pyrimidine. Um, oops, it's too big, too big. Let me just adjust the uh, pyrimidine ring. Still a bit too big, yeah. Pyrimidine, uh, pyrimidine ring, and also the imidazole ring, yeah. And they have these two OH group on top and on the side of the um, uh, pyrimidine ring. Okay, all right. For for when these uric are elevated, why sorry, why this uric acid um, can form or can uh, be actually deposit a lot in the in the in the joints, uh, certain or a certain area in the body? Um, we need to look at the metabolism of uh, purines. So the source, if you look at here, the source of uh, purines, it come in from, it can actually get from your diets, okay? Uh, and our body do make some adenine and guanine, yeah, as well in here, okay? And uh, if we eat too much meat, for example, or seafood, yeah, that is the cause of, one of the causes of uh, gout, yeah? Uh, what would happen is that uh, if you see the metabolism, yeah, adenine and guanine, uh, the, the in the metabolism in the breakdown of these particular compounds in our body, this will this NH two will get transformed into an OH group, okay? Because these compounds, these hypoxanthine and xanthine, uh, will be more water soluble than the the amines, the adenine and guanine. Yeah, that's what our, our body do. And then uh, after converting them into uh, hypoxanthine and xanthine, these two will form then a uric, uric acid. Yeah. So when the amount is too high, all right. Um, if you have a lot of ad adenines, uh, you know, a lot of meat, meat eating a lot of meat, a lot of, a lot of seafood, this uric acid will get too high, will get elevated. Yeah. So what happens if you just revise the chemistry a bit? If you see here, I put down here um, the, let me just see whether you can see that. Here, you can see the, um, 
the urine acid is actually, uh, if you see the arrows, are equilibrium. And if you know that in equilibrium, if one compound, for example, in here, the uric acid is high, yeah, is very high, then what happens is that the equilibrium will shift to the right, okay? So in the case of uh, gout, when uh, uric acid is a bit too high, okay, the, um, this will shift to the right here. So you actually form a lot of this monosodium urate. This is going to be really elevated, okay? And uh, it could also form biurate, but mostly in blood where the physiological condition is about 7.4. Again, the pH is very important. Okay. Uh, the, the, um, the main component or main compound form uh, or exists in blood or, or in the extracellular as well, as a, as a little space would be uh, the monosodium urate. Yeah. This is, this is where um, we're going to have a lot of problems, okay? If you see as well, I'm going to show you. If you see overall, eh, there are two types of gout. One is acute, all right? Another one is chronic gout, yeah? Let's have a look at the acute one, eh? The acute, actually, in here, all right? is usually due to food. There are a lot of triggers. And uh, the it, when you work as a pharmacist, somebody come in uh, with gout, uh, uh, you know, issues, problems, then uh, one of the things as a pharmacist, you would suggest non-pharmacological uh, treatment first, yeah, um, for acute gout, yeah. So they would actually, you would actually ask them to uh, stay off seafood, stay off meat, yeah, because the, these are triggers. These are triggers. Alcohol, if you take alcohol, and sometimes uh, stress uh, can can also trigger off uh, acute gout. Yeah, and um, what they tend to get is get painful. Uh, the big the big thumb uh, uh, of the of the food is painful. Um, so the if they do get a persistent. Um, uh, problem issues with the uh, uh, that that pain or uh, that um, a bit of inflamed uh, big toe as well. Then uh, one of the treatments you can consider is colchicine. All right. So in this case, you see colchicine, and uh, let me just show you also overall before I move on to the drug. If you see, it, it, unlike other um, drugs that you have you have covered in uh, PHC five to five. Uh, if you see H1, H2 antagonist, if you see as well uh, the peptic ulcer, the uh, proton pump inhibitors, if you also see the NSAIDs, yeah, uh, they have a trend, they have a pattern, yeah. Uh, but for gout, there is no pattern actually, yeah. There's no there's no um, framework of uh, or trend of SAR in in a sense, yeah. Uh, because if you see the whole uh, for the drugs for drugs for gout, they are exactly they, they are acting on different target sites. Uh, you have colchicine uh, acting on the uh, leukocytes. Okay, you also have um, probenecid, which acting on the uh, this uh, tubule, yeah, in the kidney, and you have allopurinol. Which acting on the xanthine oxidase. Um, if you go back to the metabolism here, it's acting on these two xanthine oxidase. And this, this is one of the most important target okay, in um, the treatment of gout. All right. Okay, why? Eh? Why and how, in a sense. So let's just go to the first one for acute gout. One of the initial treatments, uh, and usually I think uh, it should be treated well uh, by colchicine for acute gout. Uh, you see this structure, uh, colchicine, and if you see here, the it has got like a complex ring. It's got a six, seven. Let me also reduce the thickness again. Seven, seven fused rings. Yeah, three rings fused together. 
is a six carbon, seven carbon, and seven carbon uh, rings. Yeah? Uh, the system actually somehow works well, but the target is not on the gout. Uh, if you see again, as I mentioned earlier, gout is due to elevated amount of uric acid or urate, and it's about super, uh, super saturated solution. Yeah? Uh, so in here, I think you can read all this. Uh, it's now 9.53. So, but what I want to mention here, colchicine, okay, it actually acts on the polymorphonuclear leukocytes. Uh, so what happens is that it will help in terms of the reducing the inflammation in, in gout. Yeah? But if the patient complain of pain, colchicine doesn't help actually. Yeah? So then um, a, a patient, a gout patient has to um, take on or take uh, NSAIDs, okay, aspirin, maybe not aspirin. Usually, example is, um, um, I think, let me just see. One moment, yeah. A simple one would be methamphetamine uh, acid. Um, that's another one I cannot, it just it didn't come to my mind actually, but it starts with K. It's okay. Maybe later it'll come to my mind, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then, usually also, because it's just reduce, colchicin just reduce the inflammation, it will also then be used usually, they pair, pair up with probenicid. Okay. Because with probenicid, it will help to uh, remove or in a sense expel um, the uric acid, uh, you know, out, basically, the, basically it promotes the body to uh, expel uric acid uh, through kidney. Yeah? Um, so therefore, there's less urine in the body, therefore the, it reduces the, the chances of getting uh, gout for, for patients. Yeah? So this probenicid is used for chronic treatment of gout. Yeah? And um, I think the, the rest you can go through. And I think this is probably covered by um, my, my colleague, uh, if you see the, the week earlier in week 12, if I'm mistaken. Yeah? All right, let me just see, put it, zoom out a bit. Okay. All right. So that with the excretion, basically because of the low excretion, you have, you actually treat that uh, problem with uh, probenicid then you can then expel, hopefully help the body to expel um, uh, urate, and then therefore you have less of the uric acid formation in the body. Yeah? But the one you will actually see a lot in um, pharmacy, in hospital pharmacy, that you see a lot of prescription on this, you see alloperinol. Yeah? Because alloperinol actually stop the formation of, yeah, stop the formation of, uric acid um, in the body. Yeah? When you stop the formation of uric acid in the body, it will reduce the levels of uric acid in the body, then it will help to um, reduce the chances of getting of, of, of gout reoccurring, yeah? uh, and so on. Okay. So how does it do it? It mimics the substrate of xanthine oxidase. And what are the substrates of xanthine oxidase? It is actually these two, xanthine, and hypoxanthine. Okay, if you look at the structure, this is like a penicillin. If you look at the structure, yeah, it's very similar. Okay, it's got the pyrimidine ring here. It's got the the imidazole. No, 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 not imidazole. The, uh, this is not imidazole. This is pyrrole. Yeah, and it's got only one. Somehow, however, it has a stronger affinity towards xanthine oxidase than xanthine and also hypoxanthine. Yeah. So once it stops on xanthine oxidase, uh, um, it stops the activity of xanthine oxidase, therefore, um, no, not, not much. This part of the molecule, this part of the uh, metabolism is stopped. Okay. And most of it will form uh, the more water-soluble uh, metabolites. Yeah. So less uric acid, therefore less of this monosodium urate formation in the body. Okay. Okay, so that's all uh, from me. Um, here, I also like, because uh, it's already, okay, three more minutes to 10. I'm going to, what I want to do now, I'm going to, any question before we have three more minutes? Anything that you blur, blur? 
You're not sure? You can put it here. Yeah. If not, you can put it in the chat box. Uh, I'm going to also uh, reveal the attendance list. You see whether I can get this thing. You can download as well. Eh? If you want to download this um, uh, this uh, sketch note on Gout, please download it here. You can download it here. Yeah. And here I'm going to actually reveal the also the um, attendance list. If it's still there, yes. So it's still there. You can click on the attendance list, fill out attendance. I will close the attendance 15 minutes, meaning I will close the attendance at 10.15. Yeah? So please um, fill out the attendance um, uh, ASAP. All right. Okay. So I think that's all from me. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Um, let me just see. Any question before we end the session? Prof? Yeah. Kiranya kalau uh, uh, terapi untuk acute gout dengan chronic gout lebih kurang ke? Uh, no. No, because they, they actually act on different uh, sites. So for, for acute gout, Usually, the the first treatment would be the first line of action uh, or, or drug drug is the uh, colchicine. Oh, Kalau you give colchicine to to uh, a chronic gout, there's no point. There's no point. Oh, so but because they are reducing inflammation. Oh, again? Sorry. So, but colchicine they want to reduce inflammation, yeah. Exactly, you're right. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, kalau chronic, dia pakai ubat lain ke? Uh, Aloprino juga dia pakai? Yeah, exactly. Because oh. because sekarang chronic, chronic is actually you have this persistent elevated elevated uh, amount of uh, uric acid. So, mm. it's actually, it's already there. It's already there for, for, for years sometimes for some people. Eh? So, there's no point of giving cosicine because it doesn't really help in terms of information. It's already there. So you need to then uh, remove the culprit, remove the problematic. The problem is the uric acid. So you actually ask, um, you actually ask the patient to take on allopurinol because allopurinol is, the mimics is like a substrate for xanthine oxidase. So that will, it will stop the xanthine oxidase, then the level of uric acid can go down. Oh. So maksudnya kalau kronik dia pakai aluporino je lah Itu je lah yang boleh pakai And, and probenesit just now I mentioned Oh and probenesit Oh kiranya kalau acute dia boleh pakai kosisi dengan probenesit Yep oh, There are okay, more okay. actually there are more There are more oh. uh, treatment But I'm here I'm recovering three drugs Oh okay 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 Understand thank you Prof Okay Prof tak boleh yeah. download Daripada Miro tu Tak boleh download. Okay, then uh, give me five minutes. So at the end of this, I'll put it up on the Google uh, class. Okay. So you will be okay? Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank you, Prof. Okay, Any, anything else? Okay, eh? Okay, so thank you very much. Um, so those who haven't actually filled out the survey, please, uh, please fill out the survey. Uh, for the escape room, eh? uh, ASCP, uh, then, then, and uh, any question, let me know. You can actually comment or put, you can actually also um, put in your comment or your question in the, in the, in the Google class comment. Yeah, then, and then I'll, I can respond to your question. Uh, so all the best uh, for your exam and, um, Thank you very much for coming. Uh, wake up in the morning, yeah? and I really hope you have enjoyed the the, the games, lah. Yeah, and gets your brain working uh, in the morning. Okay, um, I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Doctor. Thank you. Doctor. Thank you. Doctor. Thank you.
Thank you, Doctor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, very Thank you for participating. And thank you very much. Yeah. You guys are great, actually. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Okay, uh, before I forget, uh, if you want to, if you want to, I don't know, um, there's some responses from students who are not uh, probably feeling that good about ODL. If you want to, you can, if you see the rocket, you can also respond in that is volunteering, actually, uh, whatever you think uh, will be suitable. It's a bit long, uh, but it's actually up to you. If you see the rocket next to the uh, knee. Uh, you can you can put in your thoughts and it'll be 100% confidential. It's not really up to you uh, whether you want to respond to that survey or not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna uh, end this session. Thank you very much, yeah? everyone. Again. Um, so hope hope to see you hopefully next year again. Yeah. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Iman. Thank you.